Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, let's go. Ten places to visit in the Netherlands travel video. Okay. Okay, that's not flooded. Wow. That's pretty freaking cool. That's awesome. I you can have like your own little island. I want to go there. Wherever that is, I want to go there. The Netherlands is a densely populated country, in part reclaimed from the sea, with about half of its land lying below sea level. Many tourists only come to the Netherlands to visit Amsterdam, but Holland has plenty to offer outside its capital. Crisscrossed with canals, the flat landscape is perfect for cycling, with historic town centers and classic windmills sprinkled across the country. During springtime, the flower gardens become great tourist attractions, providing a bold spectacle of vivid colors. Here's a look at the best places to visit in the Netherlands. Well, I'm confused though, in those islands, like the strip islands that we saw in the beginning that I was amazed by, wouldn't that be extremely prone to uh, flooding? Number 10, Gouda. Gouda is a typical Dutch city with lots of buildings and pretty canals and is a popular destination for a day trip thanks to its great rail and highway connections. The city is famous for its cheese, syrup waffles, candles, Gouda? and its clay pipes. Or Attractions shoot. in Gouda... Not Gouda, is it? Would she say Gouda? include the beautiful 15th century town hall and the amazing glass windows in St. Youngskirk. The compact city center is entirely ringed by canals and is a mere five minutes walk from the station. Number nine, Rotterdam. Isn't this the biggest port in Europe? The second largest city in the Netherlands, Rotterdam is home to one of the biggest and busiest ports in the world, with numerous waterways crisscrossing the city. Having sustained considerable damage during the Second World War, the city is now characterized by futuristic and innovative architecture, although there is still an underlying grittiness to the place. Rotterdam is a lively and diverse place, with great museums, cultural attractions, and, of course, fantastic dining options befitting of such a large metropolis. having like a rave up there number eight Zon look how freaking flat it is 
Zanze Champs. The Zanze Champs is an open air conservation area and museum about 20 minutes from Amsterdam. It displays the traditional architecture of the area from the 17th and 18th century and contains black and green traditional wooden houses, several functioning windmills, and craftsman workshops, which are open to visitors. The windmills performed a wide range of industrial duties, including wood sawing, threshing grains, and for the production of things like seed and nut oil. I don't really remember seeing any of these type of windmills driving through. Um, we went to Amsterdam. We stayed there one night, I think, two nights max. And, uh, I never saw any of those crazy, like, um, canal suburbs. Like, not, not the canals in the city, but like, like we saw, we're at 432. Like this. That's so cool. I want to go there. That looks so amazing. Um, 432, right? That's what I said. But I saw a ton of the, like, modern big white windmills all over Europe, not just Netherlands, Germany, uh, France. I want to watch a video on how the windmill works. Number seven, Utrecht. Such a great video. Like, One I could watch these forever. Of the oldest cities in the country, Utrecht's winding canals twist their way around its delightful medieval center, which has the arrestingly beautiful cathedral towering above it. Although the sprawling suburbs do not make the best impression as you enter the city, its tangled web of roads are soon forgotten once you get a feel for this lively place with its fun atmosphere. Thanks in part to its huge student population, the city has loads of cheap and cheerful bars and cafes, as well as lots of great eating options. This is what I'd imagine if there's a heaven, what it would look like. Oh my god, look at that grass and look at the freaking built. Oh my god. Number six, Maastricht. Located in the southernmost tip of the Netherlands, Maastricht's proximity to Belgium and Germany makes it a popular destination for citizens of both nations as well as the Dutch themselves. A vibrant place, its streets thrum with life. The city is home to a multilingual and multicultural population, as exemplified by its large student body hailing from all around Europe. As such, it is a mix of cultures and very different from other Dutch cities. Number five, Kinderdijk. Kinderdijk is a beautiful landscape of empty marshes and waterways near the city of Rotterdam. To drain its excess water from the polders, which are situated below sea level, nine. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, it just kind of looks like it's closer to the coast because just from like the, the 
the flora, like the more saltwater looking plants. Teen windmills were built here around 1740. They have been well preserved to the present. Ah. Drain its excess water from the polders, which are situated below sea level. 19 windmills were built here around 1740. Man, the Dutch must really know a lot about draining. Um, I want to know how like a pump works. Obviously, that you have to, you know. They have been well preserved to the present day and can still be used, although enormous mechanical pumps have taken over their task. In summer, tall reeds line the canals, lily pads float on the water, and bird calls break the silence. It's a wonderful and quintessentially Dutch landscape to wander through. Don't get me. Don't come in here and say they're actually really comfortable. I've never worn them, so I wouldn't know. Did I ever get a pair? I don't think I did. No. Those can't be comfortable. They're wooden. Okay, how? If you do think they're comfortable, then I, I do want to see you in the comments so I can vam vam blazzle you. Ooh, I like those, though. Those are really cool. Can you ice skate on this stuff? That, uh... Wait. In the winter, I'm at 8.52. In the winter, I'm at 8.52. Can you ice skate to your neighbor? You, you must be able to. That's awesome. Uh, I'm at 8.52, right? Number four, The Hague. Though not the capital, The Hague is the seat of the Dutch government and is referred to as the International City of Peace and Justice because so many organizations devoted to world peace can be found here. I was going to say The Hague just sounds like a familiar political thing. This bustling city of old world charm is home to numerous museums that house some of the world's greatest art collections. The Hague also is known for its seaside atmosphere. I don't know why I thought The Hague referred to a building. Here, with great beaches and dunes that stretch along the coast for as far as you can see. Who's that on the statue? William of Orange? Wait, guys, so... The UK, England has been invaded since 1066. Because William of Orange, I learned that the other day. Why are people telling me that England never been invaded since 1066 when they were invaded in like 16, 15, 16 something? King James or, or William? The coolest town center I've ever been in is in Brussels. Honestly, even cooler than the town centers I've seen in videos. Um, I felt like I went back in time and it, it was in Brussels. I don't, I, I don't know the exact square. I just know it was in Brussels and the buildings were so tall and, and connected. And there was like a giant town square. It felt like I was in like medieval times, but not with all like the poop in the streets. That I'm assuming is there in medieval times. Okay. That looks just like right over here. That's cool. Number three, Delft. Delft. A popular day trip destination from Amsterdam, it is easy to see what makes Delft such an attractive option with its lovely medieval center. Yeah, like it was a center kind of like this and buildings like this, honestly a bit like even more clean looking. 
and but they were even a bit taller maybe and just surrounded the entire square. It was so cool. And picturesque canals awesome. crossed by brick bridges and lined with trees, the city is quaint and peaceful. Its most famous son, the painter Johannes Vermeer, is just one of many who has sung its praises over the ages. Famous for the distinctive blue and white tiles and ceramics that are produced here, visiting the Delftware factories is popular among tourists. But despite its wealth of beautiful old buildings, Things, it is the atmosphere rather than any particular attraction that makes it worth visiting. Can fit under there. I tell this story every time I watch a video that even mentions Netherlands, okay? So I get you've heard it a lot. This isn't Disneyland. I'm an idiot. I must have been driving, like, uh, riding my bike stupidly. Number two, tulip field. Stretching endlessly into the distance, the Netherlands' colorful tulip fields are one of its most evocative sights. I saw some Ever ridiculous since the late stat, okay? And there's no way that, like, 80% of flower exports come from the Netherlands. It's got to be tulip exports, okay? There's no way that the world market of flowers, four out of five flowers come from the Netherlands. There's just no way. Like, maybe tulips. Century, when the beautiful bulbs wow. first arrived and tulip mania struck Europe, visitors have been attracted to its fantastic flower beds and lavishly landscaped gardens. By far the biggest and best of its flower parks is Kuchenhof, home to around 7 million tulips, daffodils, and roses. Cycling around Holland's fetching fields is a delight, with loads of great photos to be had of pretty purple, orange, and red flowers waving in the wind. Number one, Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a pleasant city marked by meandering canals lined with tall, narrow row houses. It is the city where Anne Frank kept her most famous diary, so visiting the house where she wrote it is a must. This it Venice of the North choose. also oh, is a city did. of great art, beginning with the Rijksmuseum, home to great European masterpieces, I Rembrandt's house, and the more modern Van Gogh Museum. A Take the, uh, a break from sightseeing Amsterdam to tour letters. and sample Holland's beer and the Heineken Brewery. I remember being like, oh my God, people really taking pictures on that thing all the time. And as soon as I see it, I'm like, oh, me, 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 let me get on the tee. <laughs> I've been on this exact walkway right here. Um, I remember there was like a, a cool like violin, violinist playing right over here. I remember coming out of there and walking towards us. And I think, wait, that's the Rembrandt Museum right there? Isn't the, the Amsterdam letters right behind us, like if we were this camera's point of view? Or am I looking at it? I'm, I'm almost positive this is where it was. Like I'm 90%, 80% sure. But I don't remember entering the museum there. Is that the entrance to the museum? Maybe it is, and I'm forgetting. Maybe I saw it on the way out. I have 100% walked right here. But I'm just not 100% if I'm gauging where this is right. But I've definitely walked on this. President John F. Kennedy.
what a great video. Um, definitely I'd subscribe to this channel. Uh, yeah, so it was beautiful. I have a few more European destinations up here. Uh, and that, that was great. I love that. I hope all you Dutchies are Netherlandish. Hi, I hope everyone from Netherlands, you're, you're doing great. All right. And I'd love to go back there. All right. That was great. I enjoyed that a lot. I enjoyed these videos every time I watch them and I'm going to watch another right after this. I uh, love to see your guys' comments down there in the comments section, and I'll see you guys next time. Love y'all. Bye, guys.